In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import PowerPoint slides into Articulate Storyline 360. Now, uh, there are a few considerations, so we'll talk through those as we do that. But for the most part, the process is pretty straightforward. So I happen to have some generic content library slides. We'll pretend that this is my uh, facilitated training course, and I want to now convert that to an e-learning course. So I've got this PowerPoint content. I want to bring that into Storyline. Uh, so we'll look at what the process is. And I'll give you a couple of tips on how to take the static content and make it interactive. So the first thing we want to consider is uh, when we first open up Storyline, uh, and we look at the slides in Storyline here, the aspect ratio for Storyline's default slide is going to be 4 by 3. So if I go into my Design tab up here, and I look at Story Size, you can see by default it's 4 by 3. What I want to do is make sure that the PowerPoint slides and the Storyline slides are the same aspect ratio. If I take a wide slide and I import that into a narrower slide, that's going to skew the content and shift that around. So that may not be what I want. So um, let's go ahead and look at PowerPoint. By default, PowerPoint's 16 by 9. So if we go to the Design tab, most likely this slideshow is going to be 16 by 9. And I can see that's the case. So I want to come into Storyline, and I want to make sure I set Storyline to 16 by 9. So what that's going to do is it's going to make the slides wide. So now when I bring my PowerPoint slides into Storyline, it's going to be nice and clean. So now what I need to do is just import those. Uh, I'm going to go into Import. But let's look at this PowerPoint slide. I want to point out one other thing here. So what I did in PowerPoint is I added some audio files on these two slides. So you can see what happens when I import the audio as well. So uh, let's go ahead and come back to Storyline. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go to Slides. So let's go to the Slides tab. And you'll see there's an Import option. So we'll Import PowerPoint. And then I just need to find my slide deck, which is right here. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And it's going to import the PowerPoint slide. So now I can see all 19 slides uh, that are part of that PowerPoint file. I'm going to go ahead and import those. I can import those into the existing scene or new scene. I don't have to import all of them, but we'll go ahead and import them all. So I'm going to import them. Now what's going to happen is PowerPoint and Storyline are two different applications. But what Storyline is going to do is open up PowerPoint, look at what's there. And it's essentially rebuilding the PowerPoint content in Storyline. So now it's not store it's not PowerPoint inside of Storyline. It's really just all that PowerPoint content imported into Storyline. But all that content in Storyline is now uh, Storyline content. So uh, text boxes will be text boxes. Pictures are pictures. Shapes are shapes. Uh, the templates are templates. So you would work with those Storyline slides the same way you would with any other Storyline slide. So the PowerPoint becomes Storyline in the process. And then all those things become editable. And you'll see that with the timeline and everything else. Now, for the most part, it's probably about 99% accurate. And you'll see what it looks like when we bring it in. Uh, there may be on occasion something where you have to tweak it a little bit. So you would want to import those and then review all the slides. But uh, for the most part, um, it works really well. Now, when you do bring in PowerPoint slides, uh, there is a couple things you want to consider. One is that the aspect ratio of the slides. The other thing is the triggers. Uh, by default, PowerPoint is kind of set to animate automat or advance automatically. So you'll notice like on these triggers right here on the slides, uh, there's an extra trigger that says jump to next slide when the timeline ends. And so you want to make sure uh, that you get rid of those uh, triggers because um, those are there uh, by default when you import PowerPoint. And that's just a matter. You can do a couple things. Uh, one is you can um, select all the slides here. And you can uh, see how it says slides advance automatically. We're just going to go ahead and say by user. And then now if we click back, I think that was slide. The second slide, if we click on that, you can see those advance automatically triggers are no longer there. So select all the slides and then get rid of that trigger on there. Now they're like any other slide. Uh, so now when you come into the slides, let's see, I think 2.3 had audio. You'll notice that there's a character. All these things are 
separate objects and then you can see here's the audio track that we brought in. So this is just the timeline. It's going to work the same way and then uh, if you had timed sequences those would be those would come in as well. So you can see how all that works and now you're just going to edit it like you would any other uh, slide. So let's say we want to make this uh, interactive. Now that's just a matter of figuring out what you want to do. You know you could do things like uh, this right here is not interactive so you could create a tabs interaction out of this slide and then put some additional content or these could be um, links to other slides so that would just be a matter of adding a trigger here and saying jump to slide and choosing what slides you want to do. Uh, you can even build like little um, visited buttons if you want to so that's just a matter of selecting the object going down to states and then adding uh, additional states uh, to that. So let's just go ahead and let's say we added a hover state and we'll just add a hover state on here and when we move the mouse over uh, maybe uh, that becomes a really light blue. Uh, so maybe maybe it's not perfect for what we want to do but you can kind of see how that works here when we preview this. And it should be done here in just a second. And now we can see the button has a little hover state on it. So it's really just a matter of what you want to do uh, when you're building these things. Um, let's say you have something like this. This actually is a nice one that could easily be an interaction. Maybe um, I want these to be buttons with selected states and so as I click on them uh, they become selected or maybe these are visited states as I click on them the content is exposed. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So what I want to do here is uh, let's see how we want to do this. Let's go ahead and create these as um, visited states. So I'm going to I'm going to open this up. I'm going to create a visited state here, and then um, we're going to keep this like this. And then I'm going to use Format Painter and apply visited state to the other one. So I'm going to double click on Format Painter, and then this will just quickly build visited states for me. And so I've got the visited states. Now all I need to do is select this object. So I'm on this object. I'm going to do control X and I'm going to come over here to this here and we're going to go into the visited state by double clicking and I'm going to do control V and paste that in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go control X that takes it onto the clipboard. We're going to click on our second object here, go inside the visited state, control V. And what the visited state does is the text isn't going to be visible but when I click on that it'll expose the text and it'll stay in the visited state. If I did a selected state, the selected state uh, would could toggle on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And so toggling on and off probably doesn't make sense. So we're going to paste that in here and we'll do this last one. So we're going to do Control X. That puts it on a clipboard. Click in here. We're going to go into the visited state. Double click on it. So I can see I'm in the visit state. I'm going to do control V and paste it. So now I quickly took what was a static slide and now we've made it interactive. So let's go ahead and preview this. And I've got a nice simple interaction. When I click on this here, um, you can see, oops, well, I guess I should have made sure that this was actually completely clickable and not just the border. Uh, but that's something you can work on. But you can see how you could take your static content give the learner a screen to touch so they could do things on the screen and uh, you really haven't changed your content much but you've taken something that was static and you made it a little bit interactive. A lot of neat things you can do once you bring that content in but that's the key thing is uh, you're going to import your PowerPoint slides using that import feature. Make sure your slides are the same aspect ratio so when you bring them in and then you want to remove that auto advance trigger uh, that comes in with PowerPoint and then the other thing is start to look at your slides. You might have to tweak uh, some here or there but uh, look at the slides and figure out ways you can make uh, different components on those slides interactive. So even though you may not have completely changed your content you have taken that static content and you've made a nice little interactive module. When you're done with that just go ahead go to publish here uh, choose your publish options most likely it's going to be for LMS uh, set your tracking options and publish and then you have a course that you can upload to your learning management system.